Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video we'll be taking a look at the Nerd Miner. This is a tiny little Bitcoin miner uh, that allows you to mine, obviously, Bitcoin or solo mine Bitcoin. Um, and it's just a chance at winning a Bitcoin block, a very small chance. I'm talking, there. you may never hit a Bitcoin block with this. However, products like this or devices like this is what got me into mining in the first place. Playing around with different logic boards uh, or just throwing some old school GPUs in a milk crate back in the day and hashing away. Stuff like this gets me interested in mining. There's a few things you're going to need. Uh, in here, we got the T-Display S3. We're also going to need a USB uh, Type-A to Type-C, or maybe you have on your computer Type-C to Type-C, whatever we need to connect to the T-Display directly. Um, and you want to print yourself a case. So if you've got a 3D printer, I'm going to show you a link where you can go and get some of the files. Um, and then we're going to need the ESP tool. First off, let's give a huge shout out to Bitmaker. Uh, their channel is uh, just over 10K subscribers. I'm going to leave them linked down in the description. They did a great guide or tutorial showing you users how to set up their nerd miner. Um, so make sure to check them out. Even if you don't understand Spanish, please go show them some love. Uh, did a really great job. Now you can get the T-Display off of Amazon, Alibaba, whatever it might be. Just this little tiny guy, 1.9 inch uh, LCD display. Um, and then you connect, it, connect to it via the... Uh, type C connector or cable. Now you'll see on here uh, various prices for it. If you can just get yourself the LCD, but then turn around um, and print your own box, I would recommend doing that because on the GitHub repository that we do need to get some files from, uh, they do have the 3D files. Like you can see here, here are some of the files for users that are, have a 3D printer and they want to print it out themselves or make their own box. This is what the box will look like. You can even get your own fan um and you know wire it up and do what you need to but we need the tt go t display s3 that's number one that's what we have here then we need the repository from bitmaker if we come up to the top here everything's gonna be linked down in the description you click on code and then download zip so we're going to store our repository somewhere and then obviously we need the usb type a to type c cable or type c to type c depending on the the computer you have and then we're going to need to go to the ESP tool online and go ahead and configure our miner the way we want. So inside this box, this one that I got here, it pretty much has everything already good to go. I could have 3D printed my own, uh, but I didn't because I don't have a 3D printer, but I could have you know, gotten uh, CryptoMakel to do it. So inside the box, you can see the little, uh, this one's called LilyGo, right? And it comes with everything we need already in it. We got our little connectors. Right, so our, our little connectors and even a little wire that we can utilize to possibly power like maybe a fan. So we got the little LCD on the front there. We got our two buttons. Then on the side here, we have our Type-C connector to where we can talk to this board. And it's just a matter of getting it connected and start talking to it. So I'm gonna get this set up on the computer right now. And I'm gonna talk to this device. I have it connected via my Type-C cable to the front of my case and then connected to the type c port on the device on initial boot you're going to see the logo like lily go it's going to see some it's going to see your actual wi-fi access points and list them on here and then it's going to have trouble connecting because we got to use the esp tool to connect and talk to this device so we're going to the link that's in github express if.github.io obviously i'll link it down in the description and then at the very top here we're going to click this drop down and choose uh 1152 and then we're going to hit connect. You're going to see USB JTAG serial debug unit COM3 paired and just want to click connect. Um, While the device is connecting, you can go ahead and extract those files that you got from the NerdMiner V2. And we need to go to the bin folder because these four files in here we need. Now, I like to copy the beginning aspect here, the 0x0000, because we're going to put that at the beginning here. But we can see that we can add multiple files. And there's two ways that we can basically accomplish this. Either we can click choose file and go through your file explorer, or we can just drag and drop these one by one in here. But again, changing the number that you see at the beginning, because if they're both the same, you're going to have issues or conflicts. So let's go ahead and drag and drop all of these one by one. And once done, click program. It's going to program your little device. I don't see anything coming up on the LCD over here just yet. We're going to let that ride out and complete. I just want to reiterate that when you're adding these files in here, 
please make sure the hex values on the left hand side match exactly so 0x and four zeros, zero X eight thousand, zero X E zero zero zero, and zero X ten thousand. They all correspond with something. Bootloader partitions, boot app, and then the actual firmware itself, all within the bin folder. Just make sure you got those correctly. Like you're not missing an extra zero on the ten thousand one. Um, and then you program. Now, if you program it and the device is still black screen. You can just unplug it, disconnect it from the actual website, and then you should see a screen pop up where now we can connect to our device, scan the QR code, and manage it or set it up through our smartphone, which is what we're going to do now. So for my phone, which is the S21, I scanned the QR code on this guy, and then I was able to connect to it via Wi-Fi settings, which should have a QR code in the upper right-hand corner, or click the three dots and you'll find it. And then I select the actual device, right? Nerd Miner AP is what comes up. For my phone at the bottom, what I want to hit is Manage Router. And that's going to open up the config page that we need, where we can configure our Wi-Fi, info, set up our wallet, all that good stuff. We can even update. So we're going to click on Configure Wi-Fi. And then obviously we need to connect the nerd miner to our actual Wi-Fi network or networks as you see fit. And as you can see, you put your Wi-Fi information towards the top and then towards the bottom, you can enter in your pool, your port number, and even your Bitcoin address and hit save to lock in those settings. You can settings. see we have the Bitcoin wallet dot worker name. That's how it's configured on this solo pool that I'm going to be mining on. I already have a few miners on it already. And uh, just a quick tip, before you connect to this access point or this device, which doesn't have any internet, go copy your Bitcoin address to make your life a little bit easier. Otherwise, you're going to have to verify, read every letter off of a device that is connected to the internet and stuff like that. But just go copy it real quick. Go to your miner, whatever you got copy the Bitcoin address because you should know your Wi-Fi password by heart. If not, you're probably going to need to copy that too. <laughs> but now we can save. Um, obviously, Google was trying to ask me if I want to save it. No. And it says saving credentials, trying to connect ESP to network. There we go. If it fails, reconnect to AP and try again. The miner is now starting to show some hash rate. It's starting to climb up little by little. We're at 20 kilohash. Very small amount of hash rate, which is why it's called a lottery miner. Uh, not likely to ever hit a Bitcoin block, but it is a chance and it is something fun to play around with. A big thank you uh, to Bitmaker and actually the person that he forked this particular project from. I got to recall what it was. Uh, oh, what was the gentleman's name? Valerio. That's who it was. Um, so it's a fork of that. For this particular device, I think they use something a little bit different, but huge shout out to both of them. This type of tinkering stuff just excites me. I hope it excites you. And that is how you get your Nerd Miner, which is this is the Nerd Miner 2. This is how you get your Nerd Miner up and running, hashing away, mining Bitcoin, trying to smash some solo blocks. Good luck to you. And I wish you nothing but the best. Um, now, because I don't have a fan on this thing, even though it does have open air vents on either side, um, it could get a little bit toasty. So we might put it next to a couple rigs that have some airflow, 120 mil fan, something like that to give it some good airflow. But you can see the hash rate that we're getting right now. And that is going to do it for this video. Please do me a favor on the way out. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well. Check out some of the links in the description, including BitMaker's YouTube channel, uh, affiliate links that might be down there that helps out the channel. I really appreciate all your support. And you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.